This is Mike Sokol from RV Electricity coming to you from my penthouse studios high atop Funkstown Hill. Yes, there really is a Funkstown. Um, and today we're going to be discussing a little bit about dog bone adapters. Uh, I have a variety of ones here. I've had a number of questions about how do I actually tie my RV into house power? Uh, well, there's some safe ways to do it. You have to be a little bit careful. Um, but it's, it's certainly a doable thing. Of course, the nicest thing would have been if you had um, or can get an actual pedestal installed uh, near the side of your house would be the easiest thing to do and then power off of that so you could have full power. But there are alternatives to that. So um, you just have to be a little bit careful what you do. Uh, so let's jump into this. Uh, okay, and uh, let's see, here we go. Um, so if you look over here, um, these are called dog bones because guess what? They look like the old traditional dog bone, I guess. You know, the dog jumps in the middle with the, the two big thing knobs on the end of the bone. Um, I'm going to describe what each of one of these does and how you can potentially use them in order to power up your RV. Um, so let's look at, first off, if you have a 30 amp shore power cord. A 30 amp shore power uh, takes 120 volts. Um, and the end of it is going to kind of look like this. See this little guy right here? Uh, that is actually a 120 volt shore power connection. Um, but coming out of your house, you're probably going to have something that looks more like this. And this is going to be uh, a regular um, 20 amp, even though well, we call it 15, but 15 slash 20 amp, 120 volt. And notice it has a ground. This is extremely, extremely important that you maintain the ground. Um, so, so let's say that you have a, um, an RV with a 30 amp shore power cord. It is really as simple as getting one of these guys. Uh, Camco makes them. I know I've bought these um, at Home Depot before, and I've also got them at Tractor Supply. I'm not sure if Lowe's has them. We have to double check, but yeah. So this is, this, what this does is what we call a 15 to 30 amp. So on the one side, it's 15 and the other side it's 30. Sometimes they call it a 30 to 15 amp. Amp matters not. It's male on this side. That would plug into your receptacle in your house. And it is female on this side. That's where your shore power cord would plug in. Now, I must remind everybody, if you hook anything up, once you hook it up, you're going to want to use some kind of a non-contact voltage tester on your RV after you tie in just to be sure that you haven't messed up something in the grounding that could be dangerous. Um, Southwire makes a real nice product that's available in any low store and on, if you're in a pinch on Amazon, uh, as does Fluke, Klein, and a variety of, uh, of others. Um, so right here, this is a 30, to, uh, 30 amp on the one side to 15. But remember, you're not going to be able to draw more than realistically 20 amp of, amps from this. Um, you might get an air conditioner started, but that would probably be it if you're on any kind of an extension cord. If you have a solid connection, you, you might be able to, but again, you probably would not be able to run anything else at all. So let's move up the trail here a little bit. Uh, here's one you have to be really careful with. You're not gonna need this in your home. This is basically 30 amp on the one side to 15 amp on the other side. Um, and people use these at campsites to basically get a little more than 50 out of, you know, so you've got 50 plus 50 on the one connection. Um, or you, they'll maybe use this to run, um, you know, frying pan or something on this side. You have to be extremely careful with this. This is realistically a code violation because there's no circuit breaker in here, but I see a lot of people do it. Um, what you do not want to do is hook up a real skinny extension cord here. It is uh, completely possible to melt down your extension cord and set it on fire if you're not careful. And how do I know this? Basically, everything that you can do to blow up something, I have done at one time or the other. Um, let's also, let's look at your particular situation. Let's say you have a 50 amp RV. Now, a 50 amp shore power connection really looks like, well, looks like this guy right here. Um, so you have a, um, a, a ground and a neutral and two hot legs. If you would measure across here, normally you'd have 240 volts, but in this case, this is going to convert. 
just going to take one of the one, um, which, let's see, which one is it? I think it's this one here, or the white, this one right here. It's going to take this one hot leg here from your 30 amp coming in, and it's going to distribute it to both of these leg one and leg two. Now, it's possible that you might have gotten um, some miswired um, dog bone adapter that was an imported unit that would only take it to the one side, but any quality unit is going to actually go to both sides. Like I said, I try. I generally try to use the Camco stuff because I know that that stuff's all correctly wired and properly done. Now that doesn't really help you in your situation because you're saying, but I don't have a 30 amp plug and I have a 50 amp thing. Well, the all is not lost because you can in fact do this. You can combine these two. So let's say you've got a, um, a, a 15 to a 30 and then you plug your 30 into here and this looks a little bit crazy but guess what it will in fact take this 15 to 20 amps available on this outlet and it will distribute it all the way through to both of these sides again you are going to be very limited in power than what than what you can use because this kind of connection only gives you 2400 watts at most if you were plugged into a real, you know, 50 amp, 122, 40 thing, you would have 12,000 watts. So you're not going to be able to much run much besides lighting and, and, and refrigerator and a few other things like that. You might get an air conditioner running, but again, it's kind of iffy, um, especially if you have any length of extension cord on it. You might burn up your air conditioner. You will want to monitor inside of your house or inside of your RV to make sure that you're not dropping below 105 volts. And you will want to also monitor any connections that you're plugged into, make sure you're not overheating them. Any signs of overheating, you're gonna to want to shut down immediately. So this actually works really well. So what about a few of these other little gadgets? Uh, what if you happen to have a generator? Well, you can in fact get a twist lock connection. This guy right here is a twist lock um, that would plug into most any 3000 watt class generator, right? Like so. Um, and then it provides 30 amps out. And you could, in fact, if you needed to, go from that 30 to this 50 right here. And so now this is how you would plug your RV into a, a 3000 watt, like a Honda EU 3000 or Predator or any of those other guys that basically have that. So that's another way that you could do that. And that works, actually works well. Again, um, they do make um, dog bone adapters uh, that I think would be a good idea. I just don't have one here that basically the one end of it is a 50 and the other end of it is just a 15 like this. So it's a 15 to, um, to 50 amp adapter. Again, you don't get more amps out of this. It's distributing that same amperage and making it available on both sides. Um, you also have the possibility, um, if you have a, a 30 amp outlet, well, this isn't relevant to what you're trying to do, but this is a, one that I use in some of my testing. This plugs into a 30 amp outlet on a pedestal and creates 15. Again, you have to be very careful not to overload the extension cord. Um, here's a really interesting one. So let's say you have a generator that's rated for uh, 240 volts. Uh, so this would be a 5,000 to 7,000 watt class generator. Uh, I have an EU 7,000, which has an outlet on it. You set it to 240 volts and you think, I'm going to fry my RV. No, you're not. This four pin thing would be normally what you would think that you would have in your RV, or excuse me, for a 240 volt connection, but it only takes one of these legs and connects it over here to this hot. Now, again, if you get some imported plug, you're gonna to wanna to confirm that this is only 120 volts. And one way to do that would be to take, plug this into your generator, plug this, and then plug a 30 to 15 amp adapter right here. Um, and then I don't know what I did with it. You can then go ahead and plug your little meter in right here, just to confirm it's 120 volts. Um, once you know that the, you've got the properly wired plug, you're okay. It, there, I, I have seen some weird things happening, so never say never. So in reality, a, comb a few of these different um, connections will in fact allow you uh, to do a lot more.
I'll say, oh, we have, we have a question coming in here. Let's drag this over and uh, take a look. Let's go back to me. There we go. Can I charge batteries from a garage 20 amp receptacle using a 30 amp welder gauge extension cord attached to my 50 amp cord and using both dog bones with a 35 foot run? Thanks. Okay. Um, 30 amp welder, 30 amp welder gauge extension cord. Okay. I get a little scared when people talk about welders. Um, so let's just, let's just think this through for a minute. Um, charge, you can charge your batteries from a okay so charging your batteries let's let's think about this for a second um even if you have an 80 amp charger and that's a pretty healthy charger let's say you have an 80 amp charger in your rv that does not mean it's drawing 80 amps from the line it means it's drawing maybe more like eight or ten amps okay because basically um what you have to do is divide or multiply by a factor of 10. Uh, that's because the one side is 12 volts and the other side is 120 volts. So in reality, 80 amps, throw in a little inefficiency, might be drawing 10 amperes. Uh, 10 amperes from a 12 gauge cord would be perfectly safe. I'm thinking if he says a 30 amp welder gauge, uh, that would typically be a 10 gauge. Uh, you will want to be absolutely certain uh, you're plugging, you're not plugging this into a welder outlet, are you? You're plugging it into a regular garage Edison. If you're plugging into a regular Edison receptacle um, and then you're using a 10 gauge cord, yes, you can absolutely, you could run something like that uh, probably close to 100 feet if you're charging that and still not get excessive uh, voltage drop. Does that answer your question? Um, Let's see, he has a second question here. Da, da, da. Let's see. No, it's a regular garage outlet. Okay, so if it's a regular outlet. Now, again, I'm gonna warn all you guys, I want you to be extremely careful. Um, you've seen me use one of these in one of my other videos. What you're gonna to wanna to do is, is get a non-contact voltage tester, turn that thing on, and then point that out your RV after you're hooked up. If in fact you get a, um, if, you, if you're seeing a hot skin voltage, it means you've lost your ground and you've got to be really, really careful because that can be uh, extremely dangerous. Um, in fact, it can kill you if you're not careful. Uh, do we have any other questions about this? Da, 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 da. I don't think so. Again, the quickest way, if you have a 30 amp RV, is to take a, uh, let's head over to this guy. If you have a 30 amp RV, you need a, a 15 to 30 amp adapter. Plug that in your house or plug this into, if you have to run an extension cord from your house to this, I, I, I would don't use the skinny little extension cord because you're too lazy to put out the big cord. Use the big heavy cord um, and then run over that 25 or 50 feet of 10 gauge right here. Um, and then keep this close to your house. Anything that you plug in here should be at the minimum, should be a 12 gauge extension cord. Keep it as short as you can. That would be your 30. If you need to power a 50 amp RV, you can add a second one of these together, um, like so. And now you're powering your 50 amp RV, which is actually trying to draw 100 amps from this little 15 slash 20 amp thing. And that's safe as long as you do, as long as you keep your connections clean. In fact, I will do another video on this later on, on keeping things clean. Um, you can, in fact, run this off of a generator. There's your 30 amp off of a generator. There's your normal twist lock over here. And if you had to run this off of a, if a 5,000 watt class 240 generator, 120, 240, you would get something like this, or you can, in fact, get dog bone adapters that just look just like that. Um, let's see, somebody is, somebody else says, good stuff. Is that what I'm seeing? We only put good stuff. Okay, Bill Fisher says, thank you very much. Good stuff, thanks, Mike. Okay, thanks, Bill, thanks, everybody else. Um, if there's no more questions here, I'm gonna sign off. Um, and I'm gonna try to be doing these every few days, but I thought uh, I did have some questions about hooking up power at home. 
Um, I hope this helps. Uh, let me know anything else I can do. And uh, let's play safe out there. Um, again, I'm Mike Sokol. This has been one of my little uh, RV electricity jump starts. And um, I may try one to, to do one tomorrow. Wait a minute. I have one last question here. Let's see. Uh, my washer. My washer out lost is dead. I'm John. I'm not sure what you're saying. I use a wiring dimer and could not find the problem. Um, I'm not sure, John, if you shoot me an email, maybe we can figure it out, but I'm not seeing what's going on here. Um, I'd have to get, I, I don't understand the question. Uh, shoot me an email, you know, Mike at noshockzone.org and I'll see what I can do. Okay, I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to go have a date night with my wife. Uh, I found that um, our Texas Roadhouse here, they've just started offering uh, where you can go get a take home and grill your own steak. Yes. So I just went down. It's, it seems to be perfectly safe. I got a, um, picked up a 20 ounce uh, bone in ribeye and I have charcoal. So I'm going for it here in just a couple of hours. So very, very good. Thank you all so much. Um, and I'm going to try to do one of these tomorrow. I'll, I'll list what topic I'm going to do it on a little bit later. Thank you. And let's play safe out there.